Mary Spaeth is president and founder of Spaeth Communication. She specializes in consulting top corporations as well as government agencies. Well, he wanted to be perceived the way he is. She means that legislators should legislate and judges should judge. I was happily running my corporate communications training and strategy company. You know what the 11th commandment is? Thou shalt not bore people. <laughs> One of the interesting things, and you'll hear me say this several times, even in this very short encounter, the role you assign yourself determines how you communicate. define the debate. An important, incredibly important part of this is who is my audience? What are the words I want them to hear, believe, and remember, and pass on? So I was sitting down with Jim Adams, uh, the head of the Southwestern Bell Division, and he said to me, Mary, we have a quality initiative that's going on. And as part of that, we have teams of people who are going around talking to our employees. And then he turned to me and he said, it's the darndest thing what we've learned when our employees come back and report in, they tell us that the customer does not remember what we thought we told them. And it was an epiphany for me. I realized I'd spent my whole life approaching communication thinking of what I wanted to say, or occasionally thinking of what I thought somebody needed to know. Of course, if you turn this around and you ask, how much does the person that you're talking to remember from what you say a lot or a little, what's the answer? I'm not going to do this by myself, guys. Come on. How much do people remember from what you say, a lot or a little? A little. Absolutely. And everybody knows that. I wondered if anybody had studied it. I thought if you had studied it, you could get a lot more out of it. And so we've spent the last 20 years putting together a model for business, a definition of communication, and a way to approach it to influence what people remember. We're going to look at a model of influence. We're going to look at what drives the memory of your listener, what's expected of your personal skills, some of the structure of information, why it's important to tell this story with humor. Uh, we hope to have a little bit of time to show you some of our newest examples of really effective storytelling, and then close if there's time with how to enlist your members' employees as ambassadors. So the first thing you want to do is understand the elements of how to drive memory. And words and statistics are the two big things. There are others. If you look at how people remember things and pass them on, overwhelmingly, they seize on a word, build their recollection around it, and pass it on. Now, this concept of words is very interesting because there are two kinds of words. They're good words. They're the words that you want people to repeat. But unfortunately, there are bad words. Those are the words that you don't want people to repeat. And it's the most interesting thing to me make of all these reports that she was uh, she was taping conversations was okay the man on the right is amber fry's boyfriend she was if you remember your salacious recent history uh, the woman who was fooling around with scott peterson but he's her boyfriend so he's there to defend her and then unbeknownst to the police she thought was then talking to him secretly is, is she devious is she trustworthy okay he's given her a choice of words a good word of course is trustworthy right and a bad word is Devious. Now, since he's her boyfriend, you would expect him to pick trustworthy. trustworthy. Okay. Which words are more memorable, good or bad? Bad. What, what do you know about her character? You said devious. No, no, not nothing to do with devious. This is one of the most interesting things that we observe, and unfortunately, in any communication, bad words drive out good words. Talent aside, he's also, in many ways, to many people's way of thinking, odd in his appearance, in, in certain lifestyle choices. I, I, are you concerned at all about the freak factor? Okay. Negative word, of course, would be freak. Now, this is Michael Jackson's own lawyer. Word probably not to repeat would be freak. Not at all. I mean, I, 
I have sat and talked with him. He's not a freak. Now, you know, we're laughing about this, but the words define the debate. We want to control or at least influence the words that define the debate. If any of you would like to sign up for our bimbo memo, it comes out three, uh, once a month, and there are the three best bimbos of the month. I'm real fond of headlines. The congresswoman says, it wasn't a junket. <laughs> what do you think? It was a junket, right. There is also a bimbo of the year. Uh, I was convinced that the mayor of Seattle was going to win it the year that he said, I am not a wuss. <laughs> Actually, he lost this year. Mike Tyson won it for his comment. You called me a recluse rapist. I'm not a recluse. <laughs> <laughs> These things come to us from all over the world. I love the one who's got the melee finance uh, ministers that I don't think I've stolen any money recently. <laughs> I think it's extremely different in the fact that it gives you real examples that you've seen possibly in the media itself, but it puts it in a whole new context. And by seeing what other people have done and make you look and see how are you doing things, it really makes you refocus on what you do when you're out there, what people around you are doing. There is a huge demand today that your personal communication skills be at a very high level. And I picked out just a couple of examples. The first one is most of us do not know what we look like when we are listening. Okay. It's not a pretty sight. <laughs> this is the company CEO. He's not hostile, he's just waiting. Now the risk, of course, is how we interpret that because we look at that and we say again, like the gentleman we saw first, does he want to be there? Does he like us? And if he doesn't like us, what's our reaction to him? Well, we don't like you. Okay. Again, very unfair. He's just waiting. I think Mary's a fabulous speaker. I think the way that she presents the information is really um, interesting and she's really funny and really gets the audience really engaged. Eye contact is where we really see the impact of television. And remember, your intended audience has been watching television for years. It's changed how people process and absorb information. We've gotten used to the boys' attorney prolonged, sustained eye contact because that's what we see from this person. Watch the eyes of the next speaker. Timing of Jackson's disappearance before his concert tour was to have reached Puerto Rico. So I think it's very, very suspicious that the day before he's ready to go to U.S. soil in Puerto Rico, he pulls up and is goes in the middle of the night secretly to some foreign location. I mean, this is right out of. He has been told by somebody to scan the audience. And it's amazing to me how much you can pay for bad advice. Okay. We don't listen as a group. We listen as individuals. And what that means for you and your members is you talk to people as individuals long enough for them to think, my Lord, she's talking to me. One more example, eyes and voice. And again, remember, what we want to do is influence what the individual target listener hears, believes, and remembers. So as you look at this example, I want you to tell me if you think this speaker believes what he's saying. What is the president's account of what happened that day in the Oval Office? Uh, what the president's account is, and uh, is, 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 very, is very simple. He said that he, he, he. It's as if there's a thought balloon that pops up and says, oh Lord, please swallow me now. This presentation is different from others because it's more interactive. It's um, interesting how she incorporates the clips and I think the audience really responds to that. On to storytelling. Before I went to the White House, I was at the Federal Trade Commission, and my boss was Jim Miller, who is an economist. And um, I used to drive him nuts, because he would say, well, that's just anecdotal evidence. I would say, what other kind is there? <laughs> when you're dealing particularly with regulation, as far as I can tell, anecdotes drive regulation. The, uh, I will admit, we have to work harder to find anecdotes that really bring alive what we're doing. And I encourage you, as you find them, to share them with each other. Today, your audiences are receiving information through screens, not just a computer screen or a television screen, but a cell phone screen or an iPod. And the question is, how do you put things out there that people will grab and pass on? Well, we had a very brief time together today. Where have we been? 
We've said that we want to redefine communication away from what you want to say or even, and I know this is the big one on these, on these significant issues, what you think somebody needs to know, to ask who's the audience? We want to influence them. To do that, we want to look at what makes them hear certain things, what makes them believe things, overwhelmingly what makes them remember some things and not others, and then we want to enlist them to pass those things on. Today, there is a huge premium on having very good communication skills. We just touched on these things today, okay? but it's very important that the people who are our ambassadors and our leaders in the business community understand what's required of them and can do a really good job. Next thing, of course, is humor, and fortunately, there is help for the humor impaired. Okay. We see a lot of those. Um, and um, video, props, all kinds of things can help us inject humor, which is not jokes. Humor is what can I use to help tell my story that will draw people in. And finally, the importance of telling anecdotes or stories that back up the point that we want to make. Harder to find them, critical to find them, and to share them with each other. I commend you for your wonderful work. You're so important to your communities and to the country, and I'm so glad that I got to spend some time with you. Thank you very much. Thank you.